All right, so um, the purpose of what we're doing today is to talk about leadership for Drupal.org. Um, there's been some really good conversation on the proposal over time. I think it's been a little bit quiet, and I, I suspect that until we actually start really doing things and making decisions that it will remain quiet, it's a difficult, um, it's a difficult part of the conversation, I think, for people to get their heads wrapped around in a lot of ways, um, trying to figure out like what is process and how does that work and how is it going to be really different than it's been in the past. So what I hoped that we would accomplish today, and we should have plenty of time to talk about things, is actually review the current proposal, um, discuss any concerns that are in that, and then look at the to-do items. And the to-do to items are largely about the details of process. So what we'll do is hop down to the comments and talk about suggestions that people have made. I think there have been really good ones. And then just generally talk about a timeline. So that'll be the, the last item, and it'll make more sense in the context of the proposal. So I'm opening that up so that it's on the screen um, right now. And just to have the background, since this is being recorded, I think all of us know that the, the governance process that was kicked off almost a year ago, um, eight months ago, um, to help facilitate decision making around Drupal.org, and, and Drupal as well in different committees, um, convened the software working group, um, which is Tatiana, Neil Drum, Angie Byron, Kim Pepper, and myself. And one of our mandates is to appoint leadership for Drupal.org. Um, and so it's in that, that context that we're looking to define the roles and how people are appointed and removed is the language of the, of the charter. Excuse me. So we're starting, um, rather than trying to define all of the Drupal.org properties and all of the things that have to do with Drupal.org, really talking about what has become the developer tools. And so I'm looking at the scope here. And so the proposal is to appoint uh, roles and leadership for these areas of the site, that is uh, projects that issue queue, packaging scripts, releases and release nodes, version control, so the Git repository, the Git integration with the website, the repository viewer, and the continuous integration testing um, for TestBot. And I feel like that has generally been agreed to, that's a good idea, that that's the right scope for a, a team. And I'd pause here and just see if anyone has anything to add to that. It, feels like it's fairly well decided that that's a good idea. And you can still hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, probably more debatable on, on certain levels, but there's some fairly good feedback on here. What are the skill sets or roles that are needed in order to cover this area? Um, and it's been broken into the idea of a product owner, a project manager, a QA lead, a UX lead, and lead architects for project version control and test bot. And the reasoning behind the, uh, the lead architects is that those on an infrastructure level, uh, especially version control and test spot, um, but project as well, uh, have both an infrastructure component as well as a user experience component, and that there's a lot of specialized knowledge for those. So the lead architects are about um, taking care of the code and the infrastructure levels and informing some of the, the user experience, but then largely working with the product owner project manager, QA, UX, and all of those pieces. Um, so the product owner is an interesting role because it, it to me, when I, when I look at the proposal, I'm like, I don't know who this is. I don't know what sort of person is going to be able to do it. Um, and the description that we have is that they know the functionality of the site front to back. Um, they can prioritize the features. They're gifted at both asking for and listening to feedback from the community. 
parse out the good points of a large heated discussion, not take it too personally. They're trusted to take feedback and make a decision that people can live with, and uh, they use metrics and data to drive decisions, and they're extremely available. So we've got that, a project manager who handles the communications, issue queue wrangling, the lead architects, which I already covered, a UX lead. So the UX lead um, is someone who's going to take requirements set by the product owner to an implemented design that discovers the needs of different audiences. Um, and then a QA lead, so someone who's going to be able to make sure that as changes go out, they're going out um, and have been properly tested and, um, and whatnot. So those roles, we, we've talked a little bit in the process about those roles being kind of a, a combination of skills that maybe one person could fill different parts of it and it's really skill sets that we need. And I feel like it'll be most helpful, um, especially for the software working group, when we start talking about like how do we appoint people for these, I think we'll get a feeling that we may need to change some of it or adjust some things depending on the skills of the people who are actually interested in make Drupal.org decisions. And just to add and one next uh, quick thing in the background of those roles, if I could. Um, yes, please. That that draft um, is based around the the kind of some of the lessons learned that we've we've found from the Drupal Core initiative. So, like in the Drupal Core initiatives, we you know started out by you know appointing a person to sort of be in charge of each area, and that's somewhat analogous to Drupal.org in the way it works now, except we don't always have people for areas. <laughs> anyway, um, but what we found is that like actually leading, you know, an an initiative that you know if it's working well, has community involvement and, you know, is able to make decisions in a timely manner and all this kind of thing and, and you know, get features out that, that are, you know, don't hurt other people's work and blah, 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 blah. You really do need a team or an initiative versus a, a single person. And so these roles are sort of teased out from what we've seen has worked well in some of the initiatives like the Views and Core initiative, for example, that is sort of more balanced approach than trying to put all this on one person's shoulders. Yeah, and that totally makes sense to me, too. Um, any other feedback on that section? Again, like I said, I think there might be some adjustment depending on, you know, who's available and how all of the, the details of that actually come together. But the basic idea seems to be fairly well agreed. So then we get to the responsibilities section, <laughs> which is the big to-do. Um, and I'm, I'm the one who wrote the, the section that's still in there. Um, we all agree that we need excellent process, um, but we haven't really talked about what that process is. Um, and I've suggested that we consider nailing a bunch of the responsibilities down with the people who first fill the roles so that we softly put out some suggestions so, so that there's some kind of guideline. Like if somebody says, I I'm interested in being the product owner for, for the developer tools on Drupal.org. What does that mean? How much time does that take in a week? Is it a compensated role? How long do I serve? Um, you know, what are all those expectations? Um, I think there's a couple of, of recent, fairly recent proposals that look pretty good in terms of beginning details and that those, we, we can start with those and like work together to define them with the people who will actually first fill these roles so that when we get to that point we all say yes this this works um, and hand in hand with that is the authority section um, and that actually seems to be kind of kind of okay, I think, in terms of feedback that we've gotten so far, so they set priorities in the area, the team and close can it actually say that a feature isn't going to be deployed, which is important feedback for people to understand. Like we don't want um, the community or anyone working really hard to try to move something that actually isn't going to go forward. And it's not like that needs to, that that's necessarily a big bunch of features. Um, but often there will be um, people who get really excited about something and don't necessarily take into account the, the larger picture. And so it can't really be implemented without negatively impacting other groups of stakeholders. And it's that kind of feature 
um, that a clear decision like this isn't going to happen can actually be really beneficial and hopefully in the processing, well, what needs are you trying to meet and can they be met in some other way, um, but that feedback is important. And then approving work for development and deployment, saying, yeah, this is a great idea and we should go forward with it, as well as um, working with the software working group to get budget and staff support um, for the features that they feel are, th that the team feels are important. And the escalation chain. Um, came up, and I'm going to switch screens in a minute to, to the discussion, um, but Cameron Wiggins pointed out that, you know, knowing how the community can give feedback if things are not going well, I mean, that's my, my paraphrase of that, is important. Um, and I believe that it goes from the community, I mean, that that's covered actually here, from the community to the leadership team, uh, from the leadership team escalating to the software working group. <laughs> from the software working group to the CTO, which is not currently a filled position, and from the CTO then to the Drupal Association Executive Director is that chain. And if that adequately covers it, um, possibly talking um, in more detail, and again, developing that alongside the people who are going to fill the position if we need more detail seems feasible. So what I want to do now is switch to some of the comments and the responsibilities on the to-do list and look at those. Um, because they came quite a bit after we consolidated the proposals and we certainly can still um, change the proposal and like I'm suggesting we'll do that in conjunction with the people who fill the roles. So the main issue queue of leadership discussion, there were a couple of um, comments that I thought were really worth taking into account. So the, the logistics of having people uh, in these roles is really threefold. Um, one is, what are the expectations and how much time is that going to take? Two, how do we handle transitions in leadership? And three, um, how do we remove people if things aren't working right? And I, for one, feel like it's really important to establish what that process is like up front so people know, because typically by the time a situation like that arises and has to be dealt with, um, it's too late to be making things up as you go along. And I think that um, Kathy had really excellent feedback on both of these. So this thoughts on transition is the, the most concrete proposal for how to get the commu like communicate to the right people that we have this opportunity to shape Drupal.org. Um, and so there's some discussion about whether commitments should be one year or two years, and that's something that I'd like to open up for discussion um, once we've gone through this. Uh, a two-year commitment, and the general feeling on two years is that a year isn't really long enough to get to figure out what's going on and actually get things done. Um, there have been suggestions that we just have a yearly review, um, and I, I will admit I'm partial to um, a two-year commitment, but yearly reviews so that there are easy exit points because it's a lot of responsibility, and we don't actually know what the financial model is going to be for this. So yearly reviews just make sure that there's a routine way for people to exit and it makes planning easy, um, but I don't feel strongly enough that I would argue against a two-year commitment for the initial thing either. Um, so specifically, the year renewal, and you can commit to like upping for another year. So you start with a two-year commitment, she suggested, and then review yearly after that. And try to have three months in terms of finding replacements. Um, Holly brings up later that it's a good idea to bring people in in a staggered fashion so you don't have an entire team routinely turning over at once, and that makes a lot of sense to me. So um, she broke down here that in the, the three-month transition period that there's a month to find a replacement and communicate information. And I think this is really important um, because this is what I feel like the, the software working group needs to act on next, and that is communicating information that there's a search for people to fill these roles, um, figuring out who we want to reach and about what. So we, we have that pretty clearly defined now, I think, um, making it clear why people care, and then the communication plan. And one of the things that happens a lot 
um, as we try to get organized with the community and the community tries to self-organize is that we don't always know how to get people's attention in the right way. And if, we, if they've known to pay attention, they care a lot, um, but they don't know when something's really going to happen. So I think this plan makes a lot of sense, um, which is an issue for people to follow. Uh, GDO post, um, getting the Twitter accounts and maybe being more specific about which Twitter accounts communicate with whom where, getting it out in the DA newsletter, doing some PR for it, um, the DA blog or any blog, as she points out, and then I'm really interested in exploring the possibility of using the tools uh, to get people's attention. So if we were interested in people um, helping with the developer tools, the possibility of like a banner on the issue edit page, that's an interesting idea and a little out of the box. And I've um, mentally expanded that into potentially also including a footer on the GDO mail, say for Drupal.org um, improvements. And I realized like on the footer part of it that there are a lot of people who actually follow GDO by email only. They don't actually go to the website um, from going to the Boston user group and talking to people also at the Portland user group that it might be a viable option, but making sure that we have a clear plan to let people know that we want them to be involved. Um, and then she had some transition time, and that, that brings up an interesting question, I think, which is ask the outgoing person to spend 50% of the time being available to the new person. And it's, I, the thing that's unclear to me is 50% of what? Like how many hours? So the, uh, the plans, of, if the people's needs aren't being met, um, I think these are all super positive ways of interacting, and I think it would be initially, that, and I'm not sure about this, the responsibility of the software working group, um, to hear the feedback that something's not happening, to know that things are happening, and if they're not, um, finding out and investigating how to be supportive, and then if someone's struggling but would be better doing some other role, finding that and making the adjustments that are necessary, and then finding a new person um, potentially to share that. So there are at least some concrete steps that can be taken in the event that things are difficult for people. Um, there's the discussion that I alluded to about one to two years um, and how long it is. And I think Tatiana had some great feedback here on the responsibilities. This is the part that I really wanted to pay attention to. So. Um, specific responsibilities for the whole team being something like reviewing change requests that are opened for the area of the site on a weekly basis, um, giving initial feedback to new ideas within a week, participating in idea discussion and helping flesh out the implementation plan, um, and then the product owner is the person who gives final approval to an idea and implementation plan and gives a green light for the development to start. Um, providing guidance and reviews during development, that would be tech leads on a weekly basis, no reviews waiting longer than a week. Um, final review of the development implementation and is it ready to move forward? And that would be the product owner, and is it ready to stage, and is it ready for production? And that ultimately being the call of the product owner, potentially QA as well, if there's a strong QA person. Um, and Angie's commenting here, yeah, that uh, the week review time. What I like a lot about yeah, sorry, this is I'm that it is, and I'm done going through, like this is basically the summary, so I'm going to turn it over and open it to discussion now. I just wanted to make sure that we'd all kind of seen the, the information that we were about to talk about. Um, what I like about this is that there are specific like signs that people are engaged or not engaged in their roles. You know, the, the weak turnaround, I like that a lot as well. So Angie and everyone, like at this point, what I'd like to do is just open it up to a general conversation about, um, about what's in here, concerns, ideas, all of those things. Um, 
and then return to the agenda in, in 10 or 15 minutes and talk a little bit about timelines and some other things. Okay, great. Um, well, I've, I was saying stuff in chat so I can say it out loud instead, but like, um, I'm not sure how GoToMeeting records things, so. Um, but I think, you know, I think that, well, you know, I'm a little bit biased because I helped co-author the current draft that's up there, but, um, but it seems like there was general agreement on pretty much all of it. I agree the responsibilities is the, is the biggest question. Um, and I actually like coming at it from Tatiana's um, description more, where it's like, here's what you're going to do day to day, rather than trying to, like, come up with, you know, um, we do need to answer some of the broader questions, too, like whether or not this is a funded position and whether or not some of these other things. But I think by explaining what you're actually going to do in this role, it's a good way to weed people in or out based on their interest level and availability and things like that. Um, so I think that within a week time frame for, for all of this to happen is, is, is pretty reasonable as long as we can stick with it. Um, you know, I think as a volunteer, you know, when you submit an issue somewhere, it's not like you, you expect immediate turnaround or anything like that. But on the other hand, if it starts sitting for two, three weeks, a month, whatever, I've completely, like, you, you've completely missed the level of interest I had in that thing, and now I've moved on to other shinier things. So um, I think as long as that expectation is met, I think that's a really great improvement over what we have right now. I also really liked a lot of Kathy's suggestions, too. So. Um, in general, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I think, I agree with you, Melissa, I think we're just going to have to do our best on this to an extent. Like, we don't know what's going to happen, we don't know who's going to fill these roles. So, like, we do our best to lay out a framework and then kind of adjust it based on the people who are actually in it and letting them decide, you know, what works for them. So, similar to how we did the, you know, sort of Drupal governance charters, it's like, lay out the stakes, you know, that we need, like, make sure there's, there's, in the charter of these people, there's, like, they have to have community involvement, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Um, but then on the, as far as the day-to-day -day and how they working goes, kind of let the team, you know, sort of define that, I think, um, once, once we sort of lay out the framework. So, general, plus one. Well, Keen, really yes. Like Is that how you pronounce idea. your first name, by the way? Joachim. Joachim? Okay, Joachim. thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. I really like the green light idea because um, Speaker is someone who's occasionally dabbled on uh, with, with Drupal.org customization or something like that. I, I post, you post an issue and you think, yeah, I've got this idea to improve things. And you're kind of reluctant to really get stuck in and do the work until, you know, whoever's the maintainer for that particular component either tells you, sorry, this is complete crack, it's never going to fly, or, you know, yeah, maybe. <laughs> And yeah, that, that kind of thing I think would, would help. And like Webchick says, you know, if, if, it, we, if it's weeks and weeks before you get any kind of feedback, you, you lose kind of whatever drive and, and enthusiasm you had. So I think that's a really good idea. Yeah, I really like communicating and being able to communicate to people that if you haven't heard back from a week, within a week, that's too long and you should ask again so that they know and don't have to walk the line, that, that insecure line of, is anybody paying attention to this or, you know, am I nagging? What's, what am I supposed to do? So I feel like that a lot as well. So any any concerns about what we're seeing here? I think like um, like Angie said, we might find that once we've actually got a team doing this, there's there's a gap between you know what we'd ideally like and what, what's feasible. But all we can do is is put down what we have now and, and see how it actually works out in practice and adjust it if we have to. I think there were two uh, main concerns that I found in the comments anyway. One is, uh, well, one is something you said, Melissa, which is, you know, we've laid out some pretty lofty roles here, you know, um, that would be wonderful if this were like a commercially funded operation, you know, or whatever, but it may be really difficult to find people in all of those areas, UX, QA, blah, 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 um, that can actually commit to uh, something like this. So I think... You know, if you look at Tatiana's um, list here, it sounds like the, the minimum that we're going to need is a product owner and a tech lead for each of these sections. And then maybe we can flesh out the others as 
either people come along who just are awesome at what they do, and it's a matter of saying, you're awesome, you're the QA lead now, or whatever, or whether it's a concrete effort to fill these positions. But I think, you know, I, I kind of, you know, and to Holly's point about rolling, you know, not, not putting everyone on at the same time, it might make more sense to, say, fill the product owner and tech lead role first, then move on, try to find UX and QA and, and so on, and sort of, like, stagger things a little bit. Um, the other concern that came up, aside from can we actually fill all these roles, is something Cameron Egan said, which was, you know, there's, there's going to be a transition point. The community's not used to being told no on anything, right? Like, they're used to being told nothing, <laughs> which is not a no. It could be a yes, could be a maybe, you don't know. Or they're used to being told yes. So that's going to be the, the whole fact that under the authority uh, section, like, close won't fix is, is one of the things a, a product owner can do. I think there is going to be some adjustment um, to that. I think, you know, and, and we'll just have to be really, you know, what I said in response to that concern is, like, if, if the person in that product owner role is just won't fixing things left and right without a, any kind of rationale, they're not going to be effective in their role, and effectively they're going to be removed because people are going to handle that. But on the other hand, I think a product owner that closed won't fixes something with, with a very thoughtful reason behind it, which is, you know, here are the other things that we have on, our, on the go. If we did this, it would make these things ten times harder. So instead of doing this, let's do this instead. Or, or you know, or I've talked to various people in various different roles, and, you know, this is actually a better fit for what they need, or whatever it is, I think that that's actually really great, because, you know, to Joe Kim's points, like, you're not sitting there, like, on a bed of nails wondering if your idea is any good and, and this kind of thing, so. Um, but I do raise that as a red flag, because I think there's going to be some cultural adjustment we're going to have to get used to there. You know, in, in core, we, we have had, you know, benevolent dictator for life and core committers and stuff like that to come and lay the hammer down occasionally when it needs to be laid down. But Drupal.org, generally speaking, hasn't had that. I think that there's some um, underlying uncertainty about a couple of things um, that Cameron brings up. And I think that they're worth acknowledging, um, one of which is I, I believe that there's some historical distrust of how projects have been managed or worked out in the past. And I, for one, feel like um, this year we've seen lots of positive change and that it takes a while to really be able to explore the DA as a supportive, a community supportive organization um, and as the, the whole pr like push to have process that's clear to people. Um, I think it's a great move, and I feel like um, Neil and Tatiana, as the two people who are employees, are working super hard to to make that more of a reality than it's felt like sometimes in the past. So I'm excited about that. Um, but I think there's like some remaining. The DA is outside of the community rather than a part of the community, and. I just want to acknowledge that I believe that that's going to change with time now um, and that the opportunity to have a less adversarial conversation is totally present. So I'm excited about that. Um, and I think that one of those things is the governance and having the working group when we get down to where he clarifies that if there's a process for the community to remove someone who's not being responsive, whether it's a product owner or you know, any of those roles, really. Um, we can clarify that a little more clearly, but there is a governance group that the community should be able to approach to express their concerns. Um, and so I think that that's going to be a, a positive thing in terms of building that partnership more clearly. Um, related to that, and the reason I bring up any of that historical uneasiness at all, is that there's a, a plan to hire a lot of staff at the DEA, and it's very unclear to me how, um, how that would fit into these roles. And I'm not sure that I 
fully understand the intention of the, the governance document and the mandate to, to appoint and remove people, um, whether that means that that's to appoint and remove staff or um, folks working on a contract basis or what, um, that's a question that I think we really do need to contend with. Yeah, for me, I would say that's probably the the ability to add or remove people from these roles within the leadership teams. But I don't think we could like fire someone from the DA. <laughs> like that wouldn't be cool. But if somebody is is not behaving in a way that's congruent with you know community harmony or whatever, I think it's completely valid to not give them a leadership role in the project. Right. There were suggestions. I guess what I'm responding to, and I think that they're fine ideas. Um, but to, uh, had pointed out that some of the roles maybe should be folks who are on staff, who are paid. Mm -hmm. I, I also um, believe I, the, that that is probably the case, too. Like, I would love yeah. the UX person to be financially compensated, whether they're staff or contractor or whatever. Um. Yeah, and I, I am not in any way opposed to that. I'm just saying that I feel like it's a uh, it's an, there's some uneasiness there um, about how that works. If mm -hmm. you identify that as a staff role, then that means, and it's just about what that means. Does that mean it's okay for the software working group to say, well, you may be DA staff, but you're not doing a good job as the UX lead, so yeah, sorry about that. I, I mean, it, change, it, it makes things less clear. I think. Yeah, fair enough. That's that's definitely a dicey, a potentially dicey situation for sure. I think in that case, what we would do probably is escalate it, um, I guess to the board or something. You know, like the ultimate escalation chain. I guess if it gets tough, like I, I really think in that situation we use our escalation chain. So you know, like we would say, like this, this, this person's got to go. Escalate it to Holly, who you know holds the, you know, keys to their employment or whatever, and then she can make the call, and then if we feel like the call wasn't made properly, we can always escalate to the board as well. But yeah, it's definitely uncomfortable, for sure. Um, that's why, talking about the, the um, uh, what am I trying to say, the, the terms or whatever, um, that's a good reason to have yearly reviews or however we want to structure it. Um, but the nice thing about yearly reviews is they, you know, give us an opportunity to nicely say, oh, so-and-so has decided to move on to other things, <laughs> you know what I mean, like, without, like, actually, like, booting someone out of the community in a really public, messy way, you know. Um. And a chance to confirm that people are doing a great job. For whatever that's worth, <laughs> like exactly. yes, let's 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 land on the positive side of that. Like, yes, we might have someone who does such a great job that they're a lifer, and that would be great. So one of the things I don't know for the software working group moving forward is how the the discussion of compensation for various positions happens, and whether um, people who are on the call today have ideas about how compensation for filling these roles will impact the the things that happen, how they how it should, you know. One of the things that I suggested is if we're looking at being experimental, then filling it with a full time staff position maybe isn't like the right way to go about it, and we could consider things like stipends. Um, I question the like financial viability if the site gets divided into even eight major areas. How that how that works together in terms of being able to adequately compensate people for their time, and and whether we want it to be volunteer, what that even looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, well, if we decide to compensate it, money has to come from somewhere, so. That'd be, I guess, the software working group's budget. Uh, so, yeah, we have a budget set aside. We can use it, but it's not what the board approved since we didn't think of this uh, before the budget got approved.
So it becomes a software working group recommendation. So you're so, saying that we could take money out of our, what we would have allocated for feature development? And yeah, I, I think we'd probably have to go to the board for approval and say, hey, can we spend this money on something that we didn't say we would spend it on? Uh, or, you know, we can go to the uh, board and say, can we have more money? Uh, so it's a whole process. So I would carry that forward as a conversation the software working group can continue having, um, which is how does compensation fit into the mandate that we have to appoint these roles. Um, and that's certainly yeah, something we can I think we can, can have that discussion. I, in the interest of like agility, I would love to get this rolling and try and find people who either through like, you know, 5% time from their employer or just due to lack of sleeping or whatever can try and do this without us tackling that question because I think tackling that question is going to be, it's going to open a big can of worms and we're going to want to be really thoughtful about it. But on the other hand, we need these people in these leadership positions like now. Um, so I would prefer to defer that to a later time if possible. It might not be possible. It might be that we can't find someone who can say, I'm going to be on, so on top of this I can get back to people in a week without the DA's money. Um, but if it is possible to find someone who could who could say that and who we think would be good in that role, um, I really think we should we should try to do that because, you know, then it's then it's merely in air quotes, you know, figuring out all of the other things we need to figure out, you know, in terms of responsibilities and day to day work and that kind of thing, without also tacking on politics of of who's getting paid and who isn't and those kinds of things. Yeah, understood. I also feel a, a pressure to move these things forward because we have lots of questions and things, you know, um, coming up in the in the year ahead of us. Um, that does lead me to the the other thing that I wanted to be sure that we discuss, and that is how long do we need to let the community know that we are looking for people for these roles and for them to indicate their interest. What's a reasonable communication time? And I'm actually, I know that, that Angie, you and I have talked about it, but I'm curious from the other folks on the call, how long is reasonable for getting this started? Because of course it introduces a lot of latency into the process if it takes two months to, uh, to have that call open. So. And I'm thinking about it in the cost plan that Kathy put forward. So if we communicate through those channels, how long before it's reasonable to, uh, to appoint people? Can you hear me now, Angie? Uh, I can hear. It did cut out a little bit before. Oh, Jeremy's here. Yay. And who else has joined? Jay, I haven't, haven't had the list open. Welcome. So my guess is if I, if I made a proposal that said one week is long enough, that that would be a bad idea and it's not really long enough. But I don't know how long is. I feel like, I hate to say it, but I feel like a month is probably what we would want. And let me just clarify why that is. Because ideally, we could include, well, for one thing, Christmas is coming up, and the last two weeks of December are kind of a write-off for getting anyone's attention. 
but um, the second reason is ideally we could like you know leverage the local user groups as a communication vehicle for this um, but that's only going to happen if we get the word out in a way that they can process so a tweet a front page post a Drupal Planet post a Drupal Association newsletter thing like you said and then specifically ask local user group meeting people to do that um, and then basically from now until a month from now would give enough time for all of those people to have a, a meeting. Um, I would rather not push it that long. So maybe in the, in the, you know, given the urgency of the situation, we do a two week cycle. But, you know, basically if we do a two week cycle, we're into the last two weeks of December. So I think we're out a month regardless of what we do. And so it might be nice to, we, we had talked during uh, previous discussions about our ideation process wanting to also use the local user groups as a communication channel for that. We could experiment with that, you know, for this thing and see how it goes. Um, and then, you know, as we have the next position and the next position and the next position, hopefully, you know, get that chain working really well so that the next time we do do a huge community-driven ideation process around Drupal.org, we have the kinks worked out of that process. Yeah, and realistically, in order to um, ensure user group involvement based on the on those that meet monthly, we have to tell them in December so that they have all of January to execute. Since some people meet the first week of the month, et cetera, right? And so if they don't find out in time, then they 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 won't be able to act on it. But I think that that may not necess not be completely necessary for the very first time that we try it, if that's what you're saying, Angie, that we say uh, open things up now and try to, today's the 10th of December, so if we try to have uh, at least a product owner and tech leads is what you'd suggested, um, identified by the 10th of January. Yeah. I, I think that if, kind of a you know, if the announcement went out today, then I think, yeah, that would be a good goal. And realistically, the announcement probably won't go out before Friday. Why don't we make the date then January 15th, which is Drupal's birthday? Aww. <laughs> But I guess so there's, there's a couple of things, right? So one is we need to put the announcement out that we're looking for people. Secondly, we're going to get hopefully more than one or more than zero. I'd go for more than zero. <laughs> hopefully we'll get more than zero people saying, hey, I would like to do that. And here is my qualifications and yada, yada. And then we're also going to have to allow a process for the software working group to kind of meet and decide who of the, cat, you know, of the candidates, if any of them, we want to fill these roles. So, um, so I don't even know that we can do that by January. January 15th feels like that's realistic to have a list of names to talk about, but it doesn't feel like it's realistic to make the decision. The end of January probably feels more realistic to make the decision. And I'm cringing as I say this because I know we need it now, but I'm just trying to be, uh, I don't know, I feel like we, we need to be thoughtful about it. It's great if we do it before the end of January, but I think the end of January is probably the soonest that that would happen. Does anyone agree or disagree with that? I guess um, the things that I think when I think about that is um, how things move forward in the interim and as long as things are moving forward and we're not frozen on our ability to act on things that need to be done, which I don't think we are. Like I don't think Drupal.org is the we I'm talking about. Um, is going to be stagnant on all fronts because this hasn't been done yet. Uh, and so my feeling, yeah, I, my feeling is the next month is going to be nothing but bug fixes anyway, realistically, maybe a minor feature that the community pushes through. Um, so our real need for this role happens after we've sort of worked through the fallout from the Drupal 7 upgrade. 
which to me doesn't feel realistic to do much before January 1st anyway. Um, I don't know if I'm wrong about that, but we still have a couple of pretty severe um, critical bugs in the D7 QA issue queue. Um, I don't know. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Someone else's, please have thoughts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, sorry. Um, so I, I was I, I wanted to say something like uh, this upgrade of D seven is something like a, a short term thing that I I don't think we should try to fix. The, you know, like the, the the team or people that we are thinking to appoint the team is something like uh, there should be a you know might be a that that might be a step one, but we should have a step zero, which is writing down the vision of the project. You know, like it's kind of thing we're gonna run, and this is something I spoke with the uh, web chick uh, in Prague as well. You know, kind of uh, you know rather than just looking at community what they want exactly. We have a lot of this, uh, you know, like a triple R kind of tools like a GitHub and all these, you know, stuff like that. I mean, it, rather than the public opinion, like if we, if we know by the products out there which are successful, if we can come up with a plan and if we can write down the vision of it, and then if we find the people to satisfy the vision, uh, that would be great. And then we just look for people, and then we appoint people, and whether we paying or not, anyway, they're gonna spend time on it, and then they will find the vision. If that makes sense, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that, that's Doesn't something. Sense. Go ahead, Neil. Uh, yeah, that's something we've talked about doing uh, in the software working group, and I think it's. On our schedule to talk about more, uh, but I, I don't know if we have a specific plan for that. Uh, and I know the content working group is also doing a whole um, uh, I have study on like what is Drupal.org, but that will be more for I think end users rather than developers. Yeah, and I think what you said makes a lot of sense. And the first thing I try to do is figure out what are the concrete steps in achieving the definition of a vision. Yeah, I mean that one thing is what I mean. Uh, what I'm hearing, what I'm reading is we are trying to kind of cover all the suggestions or kind of make the community, the people using the Drupal data day by day, feel comfortable and you know feel more like. Uh, you know, like feel like a home, uh, but but if you have a you know bigger vision that covers more like an industrialized tool, then I think that all this community, you know, like all of the, you know, it covers all other um, expectations as well. Um, so I don't know how to put this one. I mean, I I never know. GitHub like you know like last year, and I started using like one year, and I I feel like more com more you know like a more uh, comfortable. Uh, so it's it's more like a building uh, like building the proper tool that definitely solve all the problems, but I'm not saying that we shouldn't take any suggestion from the community and we just go by our theory. Definitely, we have additional community suggestions but we should go with something to ask for suggestion so VJ can I can I try and paraphrase what I think you said because I'm not sure I totally got it but I just want to see so I think what I heard is like the the governance structure that's being set up here um, is is all well and good in that it's going to bolster the current tools and it's going to uh, you know allow the community to feel like they have a voice in the direction of those tools and so on but it, it may not be the right vehicle for actually deciding whether or not Drupal.org is the best vehicle for our development process in the first place. And that we're not likely to make bold um, tools decisions with an organization structure like this, that we're probably going to stick with the status quo and that that might ultimately hurt Drupal in the future. Is that what you're saying? 
Yeah, I mean, kind of. I'm just trying to say. I mean, uh, you know, you know, but like, I think you people know better than me because most of the time, I feel like sometimes I I may suggest something which might I know it's wrong, but for some for the sake of discussion and for the sake of I I was in a wrong side. I want to prove it right, and this happened. You know, like by history, it happened quite a lot of places, and uh, and I'm just simply trying to put like yes, some some. You know, like some things, these things need to be discussed, and it needs to come from uh, the whole overall discussion. But it's not like the whole. You know, like a, it shouldn't be like the. You know, like we shouldn't move as a whole for all this for this discussion because I may be involved active for a month, and I may you know like a put. I know I may I may put my points forward, and I find try to find people. You know, like to support my opinion. And after some time, it might not be valid anymore, and I may not exist in the community. But the people coming after me just need to bear what I suggested, which may not be that appropriate. Hmm. So I think what we're trying to do here is establish um, a decision-making structure so that when people like you have suggestions and they have merit, that there is someone to hear them and someone to like basically organize those thoughts in a way that's like more accessible to people than finding random comments on the internet in various places. So the intent of this is that once we appoint this product owner role that they would be the point person to basically if you say I really think that uh, Drupal.org should do this or I think that our dev tools should do that and here's a proof of concept I did or here's not a proof of concept I did but here's how Joomla is doing it or whatever that kind of thing. Right now there's no one to really hear that and make a decision about it. Right now it's just so uh, what happens is a lot of people exchange really heated opinions with one another about how things should be and then the whole thing just kind of dies in sort of a crater of smoke, right? Because there's like nobody to take that and say, okay, so based on this, you know, conversation that happened, here's what I think our next steps are, you know. And the Drupal Org Software Working Group is trying to do this a little bit, but it's not really within our charter. Really, it should be the people who own the development tools who, who do this and us sort of guiding the process. Um, so what I think we're going for here is is a way is a way to better get those kinds of suggestions and actually act on them or not act on them. Like some suggestions I don't think we'll ever act on, like the idea to force all people to go through a rigorous code review process in order to share a module at any time. I don't think we would ever do that personally um, unless there was tremendous research that showed that was the best thing we could possibly do. But Right now, there's no one to say yes or no, and so these things, these ideas, just sit out there, and they, some of them, some of them make people angry. Some of them, like you know, make people feel like there's huge unresolved tension. These kinds of things. So the goal is to get people into these positions who can actually cycle through all of those over time and say yes, that's in, no, that's not, and here's why. So that I think what can help then is getting everybody on the same page about where we're going. And, you know, also giving an opportunity for when someone does have a crazy idea about, like, oh, this could be so awesome if we did this, there's someone to look at that and say, oh, that is an awesome idea. Yeah, let's totally do that, you know, or encourage people to, to kind of do it themselves. So that's sort of the framework we're trying to set up here. Um, I do hear the concerns that we're probably going to tend towards the status quo a lot more than, like, sort of radical ideas, and I, 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 I share that concern, I think. You know, I don't. I don't actually know how to get around that um, myself. But um, other than just being very conscientious about monitoring what other projects and stuff like that are doing, and making sure that if a time does come when it is, you know, the right time to say, yeah, we should cut our losses and, and go, that there be someone in that position who could make that choice. So we're right at 9.03. I'm perfectly content to um, have further discussion, but I want to make sure that we're respectful of people's time who um, planned on this not lasting more than an hour. And I would sum up right now that we've basically said that the suggestions that were put out um, 
including the comments that Kathy had specifically about um, process are something that are good enough as a draft to talk with the people who will fill the roles about and make more concrete before anybody makes a commitment. We've discussed that uh, the timeline for saying we're looking for people would be getting an announcement out by this Friday, leaving it open until January 15th, and making a decision um, about people by January 30th, and that we will prioritize looking for product owner and um, technical leads potentially, and if other people come up, great, but we don't feel like we have to fill all of the developer tool roles at the same time, helping to stagger the commitment. Uh, we have also discussed sidelining compensation issues because there are so many things to be discussed that, one, that will probably come up and we will learn more as we look for people, and that we'll need to take that into specific consideration, but that we probably can't solve it in time to actually um, get people into these roles. Does that sound like an accurate summary of where we are? I think so. The only other thing I'd maybe add to that is we should probably do one more um, draft that incorporates the the more specific responsibilities and stuff suggestions just to, you know, just so we have sort of like a document to point people at um, who actually want to go for some of these roles that sort of invented. Yeah, I actually assumed that need to be done by January 15th, or by Got December okay. 15th, so that when we said we were looking for people that we would need to do that. So yeah, thanks for making that explicit, but yes, I, okay. I agree. Cool. Okay. Well, I do have to hop off, but thank you so much, everybody, for joining and for the discussion and uh, all the feedback and the issue and the, or sorry, the, the group discussion as well. It was really great to see folks, you know, sort of trying to hack on process for a while and, and you know, set us up to be in a good place so we can, you know, make Drupal.org awesome. So, yeah. And thank you, Melissa, for, for spearheading all of this and leading it and organizing the call today and everything else. It's, that's really, really awesome. Yeah, thanks to, to everybody who joined us, and if you have feedback along the way, I don't think that it's too late to incorporate things or be thoughtful ever, so I hope that we can keep um, and improve the lines of communication um, between the folks who are using Drupal.org and, and the software working group in what it's trying to do, um, and then you know, moving things forward. So certainly you can reach out to me and, and to the working group um, because we will be able to figure out at least where to route things now. So don't hesitate to find me, at least I can speak for myself in IRC or my contact form, you know, or in the issues if you have new ideas, things that occur to you. Okay, awesome. Thanks everyone.